with our deep learning, we'll see an object in front of us. We need to tell whether she is a human, a pile of bricks, or a chair. And even if you tell it is a human, we must think, what is the human going to do next? Are you going to turn left? Are you going to turn right? Going to jump in front of us? Hi, so sorry, but you're in my way. Could you please move? Thank you. Landspot we make professional cleaning robots, so the cleaners don't have to work so hard. Singapore um, is the lion city, so the lion is the emblem of Singapore. Hence, our robots are lion spot. And at the heart of every robot, there is one grain of sand from Singapore, and it brings the love and the technology of Singapore to the rest of the world. We have multiple sensors, each feeding in information multiple times a second. In robots, anyone can put in a lot of sonars, a lot of sensors, but it is how we use them, how we make intelligent decisions with that information that counts. Where you are is our AI Singapore office. Singapore has a long history of willing to spend money to get its citizens to reskill, deep skill, or upgrade their skills. Our mission really is to you know, promote the use of AI, get more researchers to embark on a career in AI to do AI research. We have one very popular program we call the AI for Everyone. And the intent is to demystify AI for the man in the street, for everyone in that sense. When the audience walked out of the auditorium, they say, ah, okay, AI is not so scary. AI is actually nothing more than just another piece of code. Obviously, very sophisticated code. But it is just another IT uh, system or infrastructure. Hi, I'm Annabelle. I founded Neurobay, which is a software AI company that looks into image and video processing. So I was very lucky to be in Singapore where the hackathon scene was slowly starting and it was still kind of ahead of its time. So when this whole field of image processing came up, I think that opened a lot of doors for opportunities to not just analyse still photos, but also to look at real life events. So for example, in traffic flow management in crowded areas, uh, you can help to better direct human traffic. So we're in our office and we have a lot of people walking around. So what we can do with this software is that we can count the number of people in this area as well as to track their movements. So in recognizing people, it's a very tough problem because uh, when they look away, can you still recognize that it's the same person? So Zeldon, if you can just turn around very gracefully. <laughs> so you can see that in this software, it still tracks that Zeldon is the same person. I think when we design AI systems or any smart city technology, ultimately the question to ask is how will it affect the citizen in that country? We actually have several healthcare related AI projects that are undergoing and I think there's lots of interesting areas where AI could be used in education. When we launched AI for Everyone, the original target was 10,000 Singaporeans to be trained in, in three years. One and a half years down the road, we are already at 7,000. I told my team, you know, can we do 100,000? Let's go from 10 to 100, right? Training the people, the apprentice, that again, you know, at the end of nine months, they will go out to the industry. There is an economic implication in that. Singapore has a wide pool of talented engineers. The government has spent a lot of money developing and training these engineers. So with such a big latency pool of uh, people that we can tap on, why not build in Singapore? In terms of the software, I think the next step would be uh, accessibility to more data and also the diversity of data available. Most of the open source data is from the West and not necessarily from Southeast Asia because Southeast Asian countries may not necessarily have the infrastructure to capture that data. So recognizing a woman of color within Southeast Asia, the confidence interval might not be as high as recognizing one from in the West. By doing it and making it available for the small enterprises, hopefully that might help correct some of the cultural bias in technology. We don't always have to give back in terms of time and money, but we can also give back in terms of knowledge and skills. As for myself, I'm good at building things, so why not build things to help people?